Is he mad with me season? Is he mad with me season? Is he mad with me season? Today we're going to be looking at writing, modeling, and solving equations. And you're going to see that equations are like a balance. So for example, if I have 3 over on this side, then I need 3 on this side. And if, let's say, this side says 1 plus 2, is it balanced with this 3 side? All right, you got it. And I've actually got my algebra scale that I'm gonna get out and help us model some examples. Okay, so first off, I can just use the yellow pans in this balance to show a uh, pretty simple equation. So on this side, I have three, and on this side I have three. I wanna show the equation three plus b equals eight. So to show that on the yellow pans, I'm just going to make this side equal eight. So four, five, six, seven, eight. You can see it's unbalanced right now. This um, you know little pointer is definitely not on the middle mark. And this is much heavier. So now, 3 plus what is going to get us 8? Okay, so you probably already know the answer, but just to show it in a balance, if I add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because 3 plus 5 is 8, then it gets me a balanced equation. I want to show the simple equation 7 minus c equals 5. So I'm going to start over here with 7. Okay, and then over here I'm going to have the 5. Okay, and then I can just think about it like this balance. So what do I need to take away from this side to get it equal? Okay, I think you got it. 7 minus 2. So if I just take away two chips, then I have got, yep, a balanced equation. So that means C equals 2. Okay, so now I want to model some negatives with this balance, which is one of my favorite things about this balance that's a little different than just your basic balance that might just have two pans. I really like this one because the red pans can represent negative numbers. And so what I'd like to represent on this is five plus a equals negative two. So I've put a negative two over here. There's two in the negative side. Here's a positive 5 in the yellow pan. And now I want to think about how I could get to negative 2 by adding something to 5. So you can kind of think about your number line and how far would I have to go back to get to negative 2. So I know if I can kind of think this through even without a number line because if I go backwards 5, I am at zero on the number line, so it's still not balanced because I need to get to negative two. So how can I get to negative two from zero? Oh, you got it, two more. Negative, not positive, but negative. Okay, so think about what's in this pan then. Five plus what equaled negative two? Okay, you got it, this is negative seven in here. There are seven chips in the negative pan. Great job. Okay, so let's review a little vocabulary. So do you remember what coefficient means? Okay, you got it. It's that amount that's right next to a variable. So it's bumped up right next to a variable. So it could look like 4x. 4 is the coefficient. Okay, now do you remember what a variable is? 
All right, you got it. It's an unknown amount represented by a letter. Okay, now I'm ready to show you some models on the whiteboard that can be really easy because, you know, you're not always going to have some cool, you know, balance to play with. So sometimes you just need to sketch it out real quick. So let me explain this first. So this side of the equation, six plus C, I've got my six tiles and C right here. And then on this side of the balance or this side of the equation, I have eight tiles. So now I need to start thinking about how to balance things. So if I do something to this side of the equation, then I'm going to also do it to this side so that it's balanced. So this is just a positive six. So if I take away six from this side and I take away six from this side, then I've got a balanced situation there. So let me show you what that would look like on the model. I could cross out these six. So I'm subtracting six. Now I've got no tiles, right? And I could subtract six from this side. And then I'm left with just C on this side. And what am I left with on this side? You got it, two. So that gives us the answer to the unknown variable C, it equals two. Because if you think about it, six plus two does equal eight. Okay, great job. Okay, so in this one, I am modeling a negative one with a red shaded in square, just so that we're clear that that one is negative. That's how we're gonna represent negatives. And you can do that too with just regular shading also. Okay, and then this side is the three tiles plus our unknown A. Okay, so once again, I have a positive three, and if I take away that three from both sides, I'm doing a balanced operation here on both sides, then I can show that like this. I'm taking away three, and then on this negative, I'm also taking away three. It's a minus three, so I want to show three more negative tiles. Okay, so let's check it over on the equation side. So if I do this, that means I am down to zero. So I'm just going to write A equals negative one minus three you got it is negative four. And that's exactly what my model looks like. It looks like A over here and a negative four right here. Okay, great job. Okay, so on a subtraction one, I like to think of it this way. So I have, you know, too many on this side and only two on this side. How can I get them to be equal? How many do I need to take away? Let's check. two, almost. Okay, if I take away three, does it get me two? Yes, it does. And I know we're starting with some pretty easy examples, but I think it's just the best way to understand how to get both sides balanced if we start with whole numbers that are easy to do mentally. So that means our C equals three. Okay, and then look back or think back to the whiteboard activity. How did we represent negatives in a model? That's a really important thing to understand. Okay, you got it by either shading or coloring in so that we have two different colors. The shaded part would represent the negative. Okay, now we're going to represent the equation 3x equals 6. So I have over here six uh, chips, and I want to see three groups of what would equal that. So I'm going to start by thinking about just 
one. So three groups of one. So there's three chips in there. Not quite balanced yet, right? What about going up to three groups of two? So if I put another three chips in, that is three groups of two. Oh, which equals six because three times two is six. So that makes sense. So that means our X equals two. All right, now I'm modeling two Y equals negative 14. So I used red squares to show the negative. And then I just put two larger groups over here so that we can think through what they would need to be to equal negative 14. So first of all, are we wanting positive squares in there or negative squares? What would get us a negative answer? Okay, you're remembering that a positive times a negative is going to equal a negative. So we want two groups of something negative. So then all we have to do is think of how to separate these into the two squares. What do you think? Two times what would equal 14? Okay, you got it seven, so we're wanting a negative seven. Five, six, seven, kind of hard to fit those in. Four, five, six, seven. Okay, so now this is balanced because we've got 14 negatives over here, 14 negatives over here. So that means our y equals negative seven because two times negative seven equals negative 14. Great job. Okay, for our last equation, I have one that represents division this time. So x divided by three equals five. And so on my model, I have this x broken up into three groups. And then I have over on this side, five. And everything is positive in this example, so I don't need any red. So now let's take a look at how could I How could I break up x into this 3 and it would equal 5? So I can kind of think about it with some basic facts. So something divided by 3 equals 5. Or I can think of the opposite. 5 times 3 equals x. Okay, so if x is 15, so if I think of it as times three on both sides, and x equals 15, and this over here actually uh, cancels itself out because three can be written as a fraction, like that, and I can multiply the numerators and the denominators, so three times x divided by one times three is three, and three divided by three is actually just one, and 1x is the same as just x, so x equals 15. So, and the way I can model this is that if that's 15, if I'm breaking it up into three groups, here's one group that equals five. So look, see, we've got five on this side, five on this side. I hope this video helps you in your math class or at home. See you next time.